I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight TV, we're delighted to welcome to the show Sandra Swain. She's the author of a children's book called Willy Wombat's Walk. This heartwarming story is about Willy Wombat, a young character in early elementary school who experiences a feeling of being left out when he isn't invited to a birthday party. That's a big deal to a kid, trust me. I think I was left out of a party here and there. We probably all were and it hurts. Well, this book will help children navigate through those feelings. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank our team at Atticus Publishing for helping us put her in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support writers like her by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing her wonderful book. The links are below this interview. Sandra, great to see you here today. Wonderful to be here. Why a wombat? Let me start out with that question. Good question. <laughs> I wanted a character that American children weren't very familiar with, but who is different from others. To my knowledge, there are only two wombats in the whole United States. But they're like kangaroos. They're marsupials. They come from Australia. And Willie Wombat moved here from Australia. And he felt different because he had an accent and nobody knew what a wombat was. Wonderful, wonderful. Everybody feels different. You know, the new kid to school, the tall kid, the short kid, the fat kid, the, you know, nobody's just right for everybody. Uh, there's always something that makes you different, something for people to push you away. So you wanted to deal with these feelings of exclusion, right? We all have to learn to handle rejection. And I think birthday parties are one of the big problem sometimes for kids mm -hmm. and where there's a sad kid, there's a sad parent there too, probably hopefully trying to help them get through that process. But part of it is understanding that others feel the same way too. Yeah. I think uh, it's probably even harder for, uh, for children, for the parent than the child to see your child rejected is devastating. That's for sure. But you say there's strength in numbers. If you realize you're not the only one left out or it's happened to other people, that helps. Tell us about that. And it doesn't take eight friends or seven friends. Sometimes it only takes one. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's a dog or a cat. Um, but we have to learn that we hurt ourselves in addition to what we think other people are doing to us. And Willie has a very um, helpful mom who realizes she's got to get him out of his bedroom or he's moping about feeling bad because he wasn't invited. Hmm. And when he gets outside, he discovers that many others weren't invited too. What I'm hoping at least older kids understand, maybe the third and fourth graders, is that each child, each animal child, felt they knew why they weren't invited. And they were all wrong. Their assumptions were wrong. Hmm. So they doubly hurt themselves. They let, they're not invited, but then they feel inferior because of whatever perception they have of themselves. So something I think we have to learn our whole lives, not just children, but we need to start as children. Absolutely. Absolutely. Not to project things that aren't there. You know, you have right. assumptions and you uh, assume, oh, they don't like me because of this or that. Or maybe that's not it at, it at all. Maybe mom would only let six kids come to the party and not the whole class or whatever it might be. So those are important lessons. Is this your first time writing a children's book? No, I've written at various times in my life, but it's the first time publishing a book. Mm -hmm. I was... I started writing the first month that Ohio shut down with COVID, giving myself permission to actually sit down and start writing. And then I couldn't stop. Right. But, and w Willie's my favorite. If if children or adults look up for them, the uh, juvenile wombats on the internet, they're mm -hmm. adorable. Yeah. Um, they're also an endangered species. So it's something we need to learn about. And I think there's one in a zoo in Chicago and one in San Diego, but to my knowledge, there aren't any others other than Willie living here in America. Amazing. So the Willie, the wombat that you wrote about is a real life wombat in a way. Yes. Right? Not to use too much alliteration. I'm using a lot of W's there. Uh, he doesn't live with me. <laughs> I know he doesn't live with you, but he lives in the U.S., Yes. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. The illustrations are wonderful as well. How did you go about getting those made? 
Well, with self-publishing, um, you don't have a lot of uh, choice of an artist, mm -hmm. but I did rough layouts of every page and descriptions. I had just finished reading The Soul of an Octopus, so I had to put an octopus in the story mm -hmm. um, because I'd learned they can stay on land for a while. And I didn't know that. Um, but I thought the artist did a good job of depicting what I asked her to do. Um, Natalie Nat is about the size of a robin instead of a gnat, but other than that, I was very pleased with how the characters look. And I know that small children love these characters. Yeah, absolutely. Have you had the pleasure of reading the book to any children? Yes. Um, my daughter's a fourth grade teacher, so she has read that book and uh, two others with her classes. So I've heard them discuss the book. And fourth graders pretty much get it with a little bit of guidance. Mm -hmm. As I said earlier, the younger ones just like the cute animals. And right. then maybe first and second grade, the idea of how a friend can help. Yeah. I was telling an adult woman about the story, and she said, how do you make friends? I couldn't help but think it, it's not a problem that goes away. It's something your whole life, and it can come naturally depending mm -hmm. on how outgoing you are, go, are. But sometimes you have to go out of your way to, to be a friend, to make a friend. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, It's it's there are different problems at different age groups. You know, uh, five-year-olds have a problem making a friend for one reason. 50-year-olds have problems making friends Absolutely. for another set of reasons. So, But we're certainly blessed when you do connect, and you're certainly blessed when you have a friend that you can relate to and that can help you through problems and through the good times as well. Um, I'd imagine you were hoping that this book also sparks conversations between parent and child, right? I, I hope there is communication there. I kind of wish I had added some discussion topics for parents with kids. My daughter does know what um, to bring up with her kids, and it's just interesting how they can draw the correct conclusions with a little guidance. Yeah. Um, it's a short story, but it's a big idea. Exactly. And again, at different levels are going to get something different from the story. But going back, we all start with rejection. I was reading recently about Native Americans bathing their babies in cold water, believing it's good for them, but it also teaches them that life can be hard. Mm. We don't tend to do that with little kids, although I'm sure there are some who do, but by fifth or sixth grade, we experience rejection somewhere. Yeah. So that what we do in our own minds is how we how are we going to handle it? And Willie's mom helped him with that. And if we could do nothing else but find a friend that we have something in common with, it can help an awful lot. But the worst thing to do is sit home and feel bad and dejected. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now you have the writing bug. Are you working on any other books right now? Well, I've published another one about Willie who, um, I called Willie Wombat's race, how he won the race. And it was interesting to me that I had some characters in the story kind of bullying him because he was kind of chubby and furry and short legs and they were uh, badgers Mm -hmm. who are um, track stars in their elementary school. Gotcha. So I learned that wombats are faster than badgers, which Willie didn't know. His mother did. So once he learned that, he went out and beat the, the bullies at their own game. And I know that's not always possible for kids to beat a bully at their own game, but the knowledge that he could do it because he was a wombat is what gave him the power to do it. Exactly. So I'm working on another story of, of Willie Wombat and his bicycle. He um, can't do it. He's afraid. And his mother tells him that there's magic words, and he thinks he knows them. He thinks they're pleased and thank you, and she tells him those are magic words, but the ones he tells himself are the most magic but she won't tell him what the words are. So he does learn he's got to say, I can do it before he can do it. 
prior to that, he said he can't do it. So it kind of leads to other lessons that we all need to learn and relearn yeah. through our lives. And I'm, I'm really hoping that people will see that our assumptions can be very wrong mm-hmm. sometimes about why things are happening to us. And usually the only way to find out is to ask, mm. get more information. Um, I still struggle with that sometimes. Yeah. And I know I never taught my kids to challenge their assumption. If I were a young mom today, I would. I would teach them to go get more information uh, about whatever a situation is. And that's not even easy. They go on the internet and they get all kinds of conflicting information. Oh yeah. oh yeah. You get crazy stuff on the internet. That's for sure. When it comes to assumption, the thing that always comes to me is the scene from the TV show, The Odd Couple. Do you remember the scene where yes. Felix says to Oscar, never assume because you make an ass of you and me. So, Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> that has always uh, stuck with me about assumptions. And that's for sure. Well, you've got every mode of transportation covered. Now you got Willy Wombat's walk, Willie Wombat's race and Willie Wom- Wombat's bicycle. So uh, yes. you got it all covered. I think it's great. You've created a great cra- character in Willie and he is intriguing. He's a real life animal. And I think a lot of, um, you know, kids don't even know these things exist. So I think you're doing a good job. The Wombat is definitely something to look up. They are just adorable. The Absolutely. You got and me they're... wanting to go to the zoo now. I was at the San Diego Zoo not too long ago. I didn't go to the wombat exhibit. I'll have to go for sure. Sandra Swain, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you for the spotlight today, Logan. My pleasure. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time. This time, until next time, on Spotlight TV.